welcome to our Common Grammar Mistakes, and today we will be introducing you to punctuation errors. Yes, punctuation errors, that is. All right. Now, um, wait a second, please. Now, um, you must understand that uh, punctuation errors really isn't my thing. Okay, now you want, you want to understand the reason why is because regardless whether you are a native English speaker, native English speaker, in many cases a lot of punctuation may be misused or even missing. Okay, you must understand that really in uh, daily life, uh, in my case for example, how often do I really write in English? I mean, honestly, I hardly use a pen anymore, and if I do make mistakes, Microsoft Word or Microsoft whatever software will fix my mistakes. But for those of you who write emails or who have to write very formal documentations, unfortunately, the software will not do the job for you. Okay, and it's the same case for a lot of native speakers or foreigners. Okay, now the reason why we make these mistakes, I mean, you, I, everybody, we make these mistakes because Many things are written differently from how do we speak. You see, when we speak, we stop and we pause. Now, when I was in Canada learning English, I was under the impression, and the teacher told me that every time you read, okay, if you're reading something, when you see a comma or you see any punctuation, you should pause. So eventually, when, when you're speaking and you're thinking in English, when you say, you tell yourself, okay, this is where I pause, you put in punctuation that is not necessarily supposed to be there. Okay? And today I'm going to point out some of the most common mistakes that foreigners make when they are writing. Remember, the key to total victory, the key to success is knowing in advance what kind of mistakes or common misconception you might encounter. All right. Now, the first one I want to just introduce you to is the apostrophe. Okay. The apostrophe is basically um, this here. This is what we call the apostrophe. All right. Everyone saw that circle. That is the apostrophe. Now, I want you to remember you should use apostrophes in the appropriate place to indicate possession meaning that you own or you have something, grammar-wise, okay? A word ending in S with an apostrophe, meaning indicates possession, okay? So this is very important. Very, be very careful. You see, this is wrong. The student's faculty advisor was very committed to their learning, okay? So when I read it, it sounds right, right? The student's faculty advisor was very committed to their learning. There's nothing wrong, Chris. Why is it wrong? Remember, as I said, something spoken and written is a different story. The correct way of writing it is this way. The students, the apostrophe is after the S, the students faculty advisor was very committed to their learning. Now, this is a case where if we have more than one student, one student, it's a plural, okay? Of course, it can be correct. This can be correct if we're only talking about one student, and in this case, we're talking about female. All right, so let's talk about very simple, basic grammar, okay? For example, Let's just put in a name, Peter, okay? So, if we're talking about Peter's something, Peter's dog, Peter's cat, or Peter's wife, then please remember that we should do it this way. Peter's wife, Peter's car, Peter's house, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, you must have an apostrophe and then S. Now. Sometimes something or many things belong to a plural object. Plural, meaning many. Okay, for example, I have two dogs. Okay, I have two dogs, and they don't have any food. Okay, 
okay, when we, they don't have any food. All right, and someone just asked the question, why don't we say students like this? Because in English, there is no such thing. <laughs>